global internet usage grows to an estimated 3 billion users by December 2014. Africa is claiming its share of internet utilization, with an estimated 19% of the continent's population using internet. The use of information and communication technologies continues to grow steadily in East Africa, with social media and mobile money taking the lead. According to the State of Internet Freedoms in East Africa 2014 report, produced by the Collaboration on International ICT Policy in East and Southern Africa, CIPESA, Internet access in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Burundi and Rwanda is on a consistent rise. CIPESA undertook the study on internet freedoms in East Africa under the OpenNet Africa Initiative, which monitors and promotes internet freedoms in a number of African countries. The report, which was released on May 23rd in Kampala, Uganda, indicated that in the region, Kenya is in the lead with 49.7% internet penetration, followed by Uganda at 20%, Rwanda at 19.55%, Tanzania at 4.8%, Burundi and Ethiopia both have an internet penetration of under 2%. Internet access has been made easier through the use of smart mobile devices, including tablets and phones. Also reveals that social networking sites such as Facebook, Twitter and YouTube are among the most visited sites by internet users in the region. ICTs and primarily the social media platform have provided a unique avenue through which to not only engage with peers but with government bodies as well. However, the rise in their popularity has been met with increased monitoring by governments. These online engagements are also faced with challenges due to the various legislations that impaint internet freedoms in East Africa. Citizens' enjoyment of their rights to access, seek, impart and receive information and ideas through digital technologies are often curtailed through legislative actions. I've seen the research that has been done shows that actually Uganda and other countries in East Africa are growing each and every day on internet usage. Now, the more we get onto the internet, what does this mean? It means that your mobile phone, you are paying bills, water bills, power bills, you're transferring money, you are purchasing items online, you are getting in touch with a friend, you are doing a research on the internet. It means that now the world is just one global village. And for us in enforcement, it means that we need to look at protecting the people who are in the cyberspace and multiple crimes are committed on the internet and so it doesn't necessarily mean that people are necessarily free to do whatever they want there is a limit that's why we have now the cyber laws the report indicated that this was often in direct contradiction with national constitutions which granted these very freedoms to citizens we draw our powers and mandate from the constitution and from the present laws i talked about the computer issues act we are now developing lawful interception we have the terrorism act that allows you to intercept communication now all these things must be done in conformity with the law that's why we are called law enforcement officers with limited engagements of stakeholders in the policy development process the resultant policies that are made serve to promote self-censorship than they do the freedom of expression by media political commentators and ordinary citizens the report highlighted that despite these affronts, East Africans are not engaging enough in discussions around the issues of internet freedoms like is the case in the rest of the world. It is in light of providing a platform for engaging in discussion on these issues that CIPESA organized a forum as part of the report activities. The launch of the report attracted participation of about 80 leaders from civil society, media organizations, government and academia. Countries represented included Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Nigeria and host Uganda. Remote participation was made possible through Twitter. A key theme emerging during a series of panel discussions held on the day was that internet freedoms should be upheld the way freedoms are enjoyed and constitutionally guaranteed in the physical world. However, these freedoms should not be abused by citizens nor should they be undermined by governments or private companies. The first panel explored where to draw the line when it comes to security and privacy on internet. The second panel discussed whose responsibility internet safety is. The third panel shared views on strategies that could be laid to realize a regional internet freedom strategy, while the fourth panel discussed digital rights and online safety for citizen journalists. It's recommendable to have such a conference as well. You can engage governments when all the non-government uh, stakeholders also and non-state actors to come together and also state actors come together. We agree how 
first of all, to have this internet accessible to everybody. And again, to how this, ant how this internet is being used in terms of controlling data. Assistant Commissioner of the Uganda Police and Cyber Crime Division actually gave with most internet freedom sessions, we usually didn't get to see the other side of government officials actually standing up and say, uh, speaking up for mass surveillance and content filtering, which are the things which most people usually uh, go for. It was clear that in all East African countries, national security was a common excuse to abuse users' rights to privacy as well as suppress voices critical of governments. Initially, the, the, the ordinary press uh, has been like, the government has been hard on it and trying to muzzle the press freedom. Journalists, at least, we are the second country with the highest number of journalists to have fled the country. So to, to try to, uh, to navigate from that waters, we had to tune to the internet, which we thought that the government cannot control. We wanted our news to go beyond the borders. When you go to greatrexvoice.com right now, you'll observe that we have not been publishing for some time, and that's the deal we have been having with the government because of the pressure. So when there is the pressure, like last year, they closed my website four times. Uh, some five years we have been having a blockout almost ten, ten times. And we have some news websites which you cannot access in Rwanda. Speakers, however, indicated that Internet users should also be responsible in their online behavior and use of the Internet. We can adopt safe online practices. Why do you post your life on Facebook? This is where the paper is getting the information to publish about people. This is where they get, they're going to get whoever princess whose naked pictures. There was also concern at the increasing manipulation of ICT users by commercial entities with little action and protection measures by the state and stakeholders. If a telco operator has, say, 10 million, um, 10 million customers, if you send me unsolicited SMS and then you're charging me a premium rate of five bob. That's 50 million shillings a day. <laughs> I mean, seriously. That is daylight robbery. The thing that should happen is you need my permission to send me any SMS that is unsolicited. Lack of knowledge on what constitutes internet freedoms, even by practitioners in the judicial system, also came out strongly as a key threat to internet freedom. We need to bring uh, people like the Directorate of Public Prosecution on board. We need to bring the courts of law on board because adducement of evidence, digital evidence, is very challenging. Personally, I'm testifying in a court case in Entebbe involving a uh, uh, website, a uh, fake website that was posted with uh, wrong data, and it's a hassle having to explain to the judge what is an email, what is internet interception, what is a domain, what's a domain name. So if we can bring them on board, we can harness the process of court. Human rights activists at the forum also pointed out the fact that the need to protect internet freedom is a right that must be protected like other rights. If you look at the internet in, in itself, um, it's, a, it's a reflection of the offline life. Um, we have free, freedoms of assembly, freedom of association as guaranteed um, in a number of international um, human rights instruments, as well as for us in Kenya, it's guaranteed in our constitution. Therefore, you'd want those same rights and freedoms respected offline and online. As the struggle of establishing what constitutes of internet freedoms continues, so does the pursuit for gender equality. Uh, women are less educated compared to the men. Women have less uh, access to like um, computer gadgets. Uh, women uh, don't have the capacity generally, like compared to the men. Eh? Uh, there is a big difference between women who are living in the rural areas and those who are living in the uh, cities. Those in the rural areas do not have powers. They don't own resources. So the one who is owning the resources are the men. So it is the men who decide at what time or uh, should at all a woman go to the internet or not. There are also a number of recommendations to help address these challenges. The laws do exist. We have the Computer Misuse Act. We have the e-transactions. We have uh, the e-signatures. 
So in essence, you can talk about laws being in place, but ultimately with the individuals. You find that a higher percentage of children are using the internet, and fewer parents are using the internet. And of course, government is there. We want them to do all the laws and all. Then we want the ISPs to block content and all. But at the end of the day, is that the right thing to do? Internet is here. There are good sides about the internet. We know we can improve our education, we can improve our culture, health and all that. But what is a parent doing? Are you talking to your child? You need to talk to your child. Tell them the good side about the internet, the bad and the ugly. The, the awareness creation has not really taken its course. And in most cases in the leaders and the government at large. And what is important here is to kind of bring them on board. How do we bring them on board is to involve them in the different seminars we have in the different uh, platform that, uh, they are, uh, that, uh, that we are going to have and to kind of impart them with the knowledge of the need of having these uh, kind of, um, of freedoms. Other recommendations included amendment to laws and regulations as well as skills building and awareness raising among its internet users, government and policing agencies. Mm -hmm.